Tashtalik, this is Tibet This Week, a weekly feature in English that tells you about this week's news on Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and the Central Tibetan Administration. Let us have a look at the headlines today. His Holiness the Dalai Lama inaugurates Arun Shuri's two scenes. His Holiness meets students from Emory University's Summer Abroad program. United Nations mandate holders question China on Tashi Wangchuk and Nimalhamo. European parliamentary assistants affirm to support and echo the cause of Tibet. News reports from overseas offices of Tibet. On Thursday last week, the Tibetan spiritual leader, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, launched Arun Shori's new book, Two Saints, speculation around and about Ramakrishna Paramahamsa and Ramana Maharshi at India International Center in New Delhi. The Tibetan spiritual leader, highlighting his commitment to revive ancient Indian knowledge, years. said, Now these days, when I'm mixing with my Indian friends, sometimes I feel physical, this physical, not Indian, but Tibetan. Uh, but as far as your deeper experience of ancient Indian knowledge is concerned, I think I'm more Indian than, than you Indian here. <laughs> the modern Indian, uh, not much knowledge about thousand year old your knowledge, uh, how to tackle our emotion, how to strength our inner deeper value. His Holiness said that ancient Indian knowledge is not just to close eyes and pray, rather it is to do more of analysis and reasoning. That is why only in India it is possible to combine ancient knowledge with modern technology. Veteran journalist Arun Shuri said that His Holiness the Dalai Lama is the only religious leader who has said Buddhism must face facts so that if there are new discoveries in science and they contradict something that is written in ancient scriptures, the part of description is to be either reinterpreted or cast away. The event was attended by noted personalities including former Deputy Prime Minister of India Shri L.K. Advani. Let's look at an interview Tibet TV conducted post the event. His Holiness the Dalai Lama is today the most revered and the most loved religious figure anywhere in the world. Uh, this book is in line with his teaching that just as he says Buddhism must face facts, I feel Hinduism also must face facts. And that shows his open-mindedness and his confidence that ultimately the discoveries of science will validate the insights regarding the mind which our forefathers acquired. Uh, that this particular book, uh, uh, he emphasized that the goodness of these two saints is the kind of compassion that we should all try to develop, which is his great message. One of the most remarkable things that His Holiness the Dalai Lama brings to the discourse is that uh, he seems to give a lot of importance to scientific evidence and the voice of reason. And he's always said that in case there's something in the scriptures that might be uh, incongruent with scientific evidence or new discoveries in, in scientific literature, you should reconsider what is in the scriptures. I think that's a remarkable thing for a religious leader to say. The words of holiness were so amazing because they were personally so relevant to me. I think it added to the subject of the book and the inquiry that the book was trying to create. I think it shed a lot of light on that and personally for me his views were very relevant. I was seeing him for the first time and I think the program was much more than just a book launch. I think it was personally, spiritually an awakening experience for a lot of people. On Monday this week, His Holiness met with a group of students from Emory University's Summer Abroad program at his residence in Dharamshala. During the meeting, His Holiness uh, the Dalai Lama told the students that India has physical, seen his second home and he himself uh, is gifted with ancient now, Indian knowledge, drawing upon the Nalanda tradition. Now India is my second home. His Holiness urged the new generation to work towards creating a more peace and better world and also spoke on oneness of humanity, achieving a compassionate mind and factors that contribute to making the 21st century an era of peace.
His Holiness also marked middle way approach as the principle of nonviolence, which has attracted widespread moral support even among informed Chinese. A group of United Nations human rights mandate holders published a joint communication made to the Chinese government on the case of Tibetan human rights defenders Tashi Wangchuk, language right advocate, and Dogal Hamo and Nimal Hamo, relatives of Tuku Tinsitele Rinpoche. The experts sought the Chinese government's response in seven areas of concern, including legal grounds for the arrest and detention of Tashi Wangchuk, his physical and psychological integrity and compatibility with the international norms and standards, and also asked about the measures in place to ensure Tibetans' right to learn mother tongue freely. The experts expressed concern at the arrest and detention of Nimal Hamo and Dogal Hamo, which appeared to be directly related to their advocacy and importing of information concerning the death of Tugu Tenzidelek Rinpoche. The experts expressed equal concern at the threats, intimidation and surveillance of the two women, human rights defenders, as well as the use of force against peaceful protesters in Lithang. Last week on Thursday, a cross-party delegation of European Parliamentary Assistants held a press conference at Department of Information and International Relations, Lagwatsiring Memorial Hall. They expressed their commitment advocating a range of issues facing Tibet today, such as human rights violations, environmental degradation and cultural repression inside Tibet. European Union Advocacy Officer at Office of Tibet Brussels, Ringzi Shodun Gyekang, thanked them for their consistent advocacy for Tibet that made possible the passing of urgent resolution on Larungar, Nimal Hamo's hearing at the Human Rights Subcommittee and the Conference on Reincarnation of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Let us now look at some of the news reports filed by overseas offices of Tibet. A talk on introduction to Tibet's history, Buddhism and culture was attended by a group of Japanese as part of a tour to learn about Tibetan Buddhism and culture held at the Office of Tibet Japan on Saturday last week. Dr. Ishihama Yumiko, a scholar and writer on Tibetan Buddhism and culture, delivered a talk on evolution of Tibetan Buddhism, geopolitical status and culture of Tibet and His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Honorary Representative Taylor Dugu Rinpoche, Office of Tibet Moscow, visited Faculty of Oriental Studies and Department of Mongolian and Tibetan Studies at the St. Petersburg State University. Both parties made commitment to work on agreement to be signed by Tibet Culture and Information Center and the University, as well as the Central Public Library in St. Petersburg, for future collaboration. So much for this week. See you next Friday. Have a nice weekend.